Hey guys, and welcome to another short video training segment that I've put together just for, uh, for you guys, for the people who are leading, who are pastoring our church in small groups. Uh, thank you so much for what you do and how you serve. This video is it, it's not meant to, um, to replace my opportunity to say thank you for our opportunity to get together one-on-one -on -one, or even to replace the huddle gatherings where, uh, where our small group leaders get together and we spend some time praying, celebrating what God has done in our groups, talking about the challenges that we face, and, uh, and just being a part of a team. You are a part of a team, and, uh, and as a part of that team, I want to make sure that, that you're not only encouraged by me and connected with someone uh, who, who prays for you, who loves you, but that you're a part of our team who prays for one another, uh, who's doing the work together, and, uh, and who's facing challenges and sharing ideas that can help as a circle. Uh, this training is meant more specifically because when we get together in huddles and one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes I can't give you training specific to the stage of life your group is in. And so I want to spend 10, 15 minutes most talking about how, um, how God is, is speaking to you and what uh, maybe some encouragement, some inspiration He has for you through His Word uh, for where you're at as a small group right now. Now this video is meant to be seen uh, a good ways into group. You're past the starter period, you're into a couple of your studies. And, uh, and I just want to talk a little bit about God's blessing and, uh, and leadership. And so really just want to, uh, let, let me pull forward here for a second and just talk face to face with you. Really just want to talk about what God is doing in scripture when he appoints leaders and how that applies to you because I think it's a huge encouragement for you. You see, uh, you've, you've no doubt read a lot of the scriptures. You've maybe read, watched the Bible series and you see these key characters that are portrayed as, um, as, a, as a part of the story of what God is doing throughout history. And you're a part of that as a leader. And God has called you to be a leader in the same respect that in some ways he called many of those people to lead. And so I want to talk to you about what that looks like. You see, in Numbers, Moses is leading this nation of Israel. And it's, it's gone from being one man, Abraham, who we all know about, and his few sons, to being millions of people who are coming out of Egypt, who are coming out of slavery, and they need laws, and they need a governing body to help them. And it's just Moses. And he's overwhelmed with the task. And God, um, God sends out Moses to get 70 men, 70 elders who are helping be responsible for the nation. And, uh, and God does something special with them. And I just want to read you that moment um, from Numbers 11. It says that God says to Moses, bring me 70 of, of Israel's elders. Uh, bring them to the meeting tent, and that's where God, where people met with God, where God's presence uh, was shown. And it says, I'll take some of my spirit that I've placed on you to lead, Moses. And it says, and I will give it to them, and they will help you lead. And that truly is what God does for us, that he puts upon our hearts the desire to serve and to lead. And, uh, and then not only does he do that, but he also always empowers us. His spirit is the one who gives us what we need as leaders. And I pray that if you're discouraged, if you're confused, if you're challenged as a leader, that you would continue just to seek God and ask Him to give you what you need as a leader um, and to be that factor that helps you lead your small group. Uh, that's my prayer for you. And, uh, and it happens just throughout Scripture that there's this awesome ability as a leader, but there's also a responsibility that gets placed upon their shoulders. And I want to stop for a second and talk about that as well. You see... You've read scripture, you've seen these interesting stories, and, and what's interesting to notice is how God blesses not only a person who's righteous, who walks with God, but he blesses the people around them as well. When Noah builds the ark and the flood comes, Noah is able not only to get onto the ark, but he's able to bring his family, his wife, and his three sons and their wives. And so he preserves not just uh, himself, and he's the one called righteous, he's the one who does all this work, but he preserves his family by being a righteous man. Um, one of my favorite moments in the Bible series that just came out, that movie uh, series that was on the History Channel, is a moment where God is with Abraham, and they're looking down on the city of Sodom, and Abraham realizes God's going to destroy it, and his, his nephew's down there, and it worries Abraham. And so he starts to ask God, God, yeah, that city's wicked, but would you really wipe out the whole place? What about, what about the good people who are there? And he actually, it's funny, uh, many people talk about he begins to haggle with Abraham begins to haggle with God, and, uh, and he says, well, what if there are 50 righteous people? Are you really going to just wipe the whole city out? 
And God's response is really interesting because what he says is that if there are 50 righteous people down there, he says, I'll spare the whole city. I won't hurt anyone. And that's interesting that, um, that truly God blesses a city, blesses a place based on not everyone's mentality, but the fact that the righteous are there and, uh, and that they, their goodness blesses the people around them. And you as a leader, you're called to lead. And your example, your purity, your heart, um, it, it's, it pours out blessing not upon you, but upon everyone. And that's why I'm so grateful to have you as a leader. Because that small circle of people gets blessed because they see your, you see your example, they're encouraged by your actions, and, uh, and, and you protect them in some ways. Uh, we protect our families, protect our children, and, uh, and God blesses just those around us in general because we are willing to be there among them. Uh, Abraham goes on to haggle and haggle, and uh, in the end, there aren't even ten righteous people for which God would save all the city. There are just three. Uh, Lot, Abraham's cousin, and his sons. And so God, instead of saving the whole city, draws them out of the city and destroys it. Uh, but their lives are preserved. And uh, it's an exciting story. It's in the Bible series. You should, you should check it out. It's really good. Um, for Moses... There's an interesting moment where God is very angry with the entire nation, these millions of people that God has let out. And, uh, and he says, to, uh, he says to, to Moses, just get out of the way and let me, let me discipline these people. And uh, Moses pleads for the people. He actually repeats God's words back to him. I'll, I'll read it for you. Moses says, Let the power of the Lord be great as you have promised, saying the Lord is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, forgiving iniquity and transgression. Please pardon the iniquity of this people according to the greatness of your steadfast love. That's an amazing statement, um, just typifying God. And God responds, I have pardoned because you asked. Um, so Moses stands between God and this nation that needs to be disciplined, and he pleads for mercy. And the nation gets it because of Moses. Uh, if you think this is just an Old Testament thing, let me just point two more interesting examples out. When Jesus is doing his ministry and he's healing and he's teaching, he's in a home and the home is crowded and everything around the home is crowded. And these four men who need, uh, who have a paralyzed friend and they're carrying him literally on a mat, um, they can't get to Jesus. And uh, in those days there were stairs up to the roof of the home where people would go and eat or, uh, or lay out things to dry in the sun. And these men go up these stairs onto the roof and they literally dig through the roof so that they can lower their friend down in front of Jesus, hoping, again, that they won't miss the chance for him to be healed. And God sees the fervor and the, and the, the belief that if they get to Jesus, he will heal. And, uh, and he looks at that man, and not only does he say, you're healed, but he says, uh, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, son, your sins are forgiven. Again, a really amazing statement by God. Um, not because of the faith of one man who's just on a mat whose name we don't know, but because of four friends who we know are so anxious to get to Jesus that they dig through a roof in order to serve their friend. And then James writes this, writing to church leaders. He says in the New Testament, if any, Is anyone among you sick? Uh, let them call the elders of the church and let those elders pray over them and anoint them with the oil in the name of the Lord. He says, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. And if they've sinned, they'll be forgiven. You see, I, I, what I want to open your eyes to is the fact that you um, are called to be a leader. And with that calling, God puts his spirit upon you. And he will encourage you. He will give you the wisdom and the strength that you need to lead through people around you. Um, if I can, through just encouragement. And, uh, and through what God wants to do in your life, uh, He's going to bless everyone around you. And my encouragement to you as a leader in this stage of your leadership is just rely upon God and go back to Him and ask Him for what you need. Because He's appointed you to this task, and He is totally going to show up in some ways that amaze you. As a leader, uh, I don't have any specific instructions. I would encourage you to keep having fun with your group, that every four or five weeks that you take a break from study, that you um, go out and have some fun, do a barbecue, a game night, um, go to the movies, uh, go bowling, and just laugh and enjoy each other's company uh, as a group because a lot, of that, a lot of that relationship is important, and we need that. 
and that is totally legitimate small group time. So you are welcome to use child care reimbursement for that. Um, it is just, it's a matter of just loving one another just as people. So keep having fun. Uh, serve together. Man a cafe. Uh, room at the end. There are a lot of ministers here in town that would love for you to come out one night and serve a meal with them. Uh, help them organize a warehouse. Uh, you, could, you could help out at the Hope Pregnancy Center if you call them ahead of time and ask them what they need. You might go shopping for a ministry here in town and just bring them supplies. Or, uh, as a lot of our military families need, maybe you'll buy supplies to give to the FRG group for the soldiers who are coming home right now. Uh, or for soldiers who need specific things overseas. There are so many ways to serve. If you want to spend a night serving, please um, consider doing that. Our group tries to do that every, every other month. We try to spend a night serving. And again, it draws us closer and makes it, makes it fun for us. I've actually, in my calendar, which we talked about in a previous training session, I've built that into the calendar because uh, that's important to me. So uh, I encourage you, uh, raising up leaders is something you can do at any point in the small group's time. So if you have somebody who knows a material or who's very engaged or who, for in some respects, answers every question that you ask as a small group leader first so that everybody else kind of is waiting, ask them to lead a night. Ask them to pick up the curriculum and them ask the questions. That way, uh, yeah, they can do some talking, but they're going to be forced to realize uh, and work through letting other people contribute as well. Raise up leaders. Follow God in whichever ways he's leading you. Uh, always uh, let me know how I can pray for you. And, uh, and lastly, be personal. Some of the members of your group need more attention than others. Um, some of those members uh, need a lot of prayer. Uh, and, uh, and I would just say get on a personal level. If there's people that you need to spend some time with just one-on-one, -on -one, please, please take the time to do that. And, uh, and if there's others that can uh, get together and encourage one another, please let them do that. But, uh, but remember, not just, don't just lead the group, but lead each individual in that group. And pray for what, God has, what role God has for you and for the other group members in that person's life. That's what I have just to encourage you and ask um, God to do. So I'm going to sit back. I'm going to pray for us. And, uh, and I'm just going to say, if you need anything from me, please let me know. Resources, encouragement, time one-on-one. -on -one. I want to be there for you. So. Father God, I thank you for these small group leaders. I thank you for the opportunity we have, God, just to continually be before another group of people and to uh, pass on some of what you've taught us, some of what you are teaching us. Help us to be good examples, God. Anoint us with your spirit, Father, and give us all that we need because we do depend on you to lead these groups. We're not doing this because we're adequate in ourselves. We're doing it because you asked us to. And we just pray that each week and each day, you give us the strength to be uh, the person you want us to be and to serve in the ways you've called us to serve. I love you, Father. I thank you for the opportunity um, to be part of this great church and uh, be a, a friend to these many and great leaders. Bless us, God. We love you, and it's in your Son, in his name, and by his love we serve. Amen. Thank you guys. Be blessed. And again, let me know if there's anything I can do to serve.